So yes, my name is uh, Evelyn Kaup uh, and I am from Nordnet, which correctly is a bank. Uh, but it's not a very traditional bank and it's not a very big bank. Uh, we are a bank, but we're focusing on uh, investments and trading mainly, so we're not like a traditional bank, even though we do have a banking license and we are located or we are, uh, we exist in all the Nordic countries, so we are just located for, for the Nordics and we're about 400 people working at the Nordnet, so we're quite small compared to, to the big players. Uh, and we like to keep it that way as well, because it's making us move a bit uh, faster, as we want to see it at least. So uh, today I want to talk about is fintech a threat to the banks? And this is a question and something that is being discussed in any fintech event that you're going to visit uh, the upcoming time, and also have been visiting the last two years. Um, and I would say that the fintech companies are saying yes, the banks are saying no, uh, historically. Uh, but uh, more and more we're seeing that uh, we're coming to a more unified answer, which is no. Nah. Uh, so, uh, and how do we see that? We're seeing that with uh, Tink, uh, bonding up with uh, SPAB, we're seeing other fintech companies uh, uh, joining forces with the big banks. Uh, we at Nordnet are always looking out for fun fintech companies to work with, and so are all the big banks doing as well. Uh, so uh, we at Nordnet, we consider ourselves being somewhere in between being a bank and a fintech company. I myself come from many years of being in one of Sweden's biggest uh, fintech companies. I come from Klarna previously, uh, and we have lots of uh, people with similar backgrounds who have been working with fintech before. So really trying to, to work from inside out to think more fintech. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna address why we're doing that uh, later on in the speech. But uh, already very early we started looking out, we saw that this trend was coming, we saw that the fintech companies were coming in and obviously it was a threat to what we're doing or what all the banks are doing. So we had meetings, we still have lots of discussion and meetings, to how do we adapt towards this new player in the market? Uh, so today I want to actually speak about how we did that uh, already some years back uh, with one concrete example. Uh, and it's actually not that hard. So uh, fintech companies are coming into the market because they can offer what, uh, well, our customers want. Uh, and uh, why can't we offer what our customers want, you may ask. Uh, the reason why fintech companies can come in and do that is because they don't have any technical debt. They haven't been around for 20 years and have lots of, uh, of code and uh, thinking of 20 years in the baggage, but they are just like starting up and doing things in a quicker way, and they are more focused. Uh, they also don't have a, a banking license, which is something awesome to have, but it's also uh, pulling us back because we have to uh, be compliant in everything we do. Uh, and uh, it's much easier to move ahead and not having to be super compliant to all the things uh, a bank needs to be doing. Um, so yes, so what happened some years back? Some years back we sent out a survey, uh, as we do once in a while, and uh, we found the answer. So we asked the customers about several questions about how do you trust uh, banks, uh, what do you feel we can do better, etc. One of the big findings of that survey was um, that uh, customers don't trust the banks, they don't trust uh, advisors uh, and they don't trust the financial system as a whole, which was quite scary, but maybe not super surprising nowadays. I, I think most people are aware that banks don't have super much trust. But we saw that we had a big problem because we are a bank, so regardless of what products we built or whatever we do, uh, we're still going to be a bank. So we needed to gain that trust with some other partnering crime. So we were looking for some fintech company that could help us bridge that and get that trust back um, from, uh, from the customers. So what we did find was a company called uh, Sharewell. 
Uh, is there anyone here who has heard of Sherwell before? Nice, cool. <laughs> yes. So uh, Sherwell was a company that was started by a guy called Fabian and one partner of him. Uh, they founded the company uh, and they approached us some years later and we started discussing. Uh, and Nunet went in and bought Sherwell. So what is Sherwell? Sherwell is a social um, digital platform where uh, the aim of Sherwell from the beginning is that uh, um, people who have experience in trading and knowledge in trading can share and inspire people who are interested but don't really know what to do. So they can get inspiration and they can follow and you can learn each other. That way you don't have to trust uh, advisors, you don't have to trust banks, you just trust other people out there. Uh, that are seem to be uh, performing well. So, uh, share will enable users to not follow someone who has a resume or is working for a big institution, but actually to uh, to learn and follow advice by um, people that have proven that their portfolio is great and they actually know what they are doing based on their performance. And it also enables everyone to succeed or at least get started. So you can just, uh, um, you can just find a user that you think is uh, performing well and is inspiring at Sherwell and just follow that person and do exactly what he's doing with the trades. Um, it also uh, enabled for people to share their knowledge with other, uh, without having to uh, show their identities. You don't have to tell people who you are, which is a thing you don't probably want to do um, with your financial information. Uh, and also, if it's not going that well, you didn't have to share that with everyone who you really are. Uh, and, uh, but you could, you could read uh, different discussions. This is a forum where you can discuss things and uh, you can comment on each other. And you can find followers, you can find discussions, you can ask questions that you don't dare to ask somewhere else to get more information. And uh, there were, we have notifications that so we push out to our customers with latest information and try to activate them and give them a transparent and good information via this. Uh, and then you just trade. So you just uh, copy a trade and copy and follow someone else. So what we aimed to do with Sherwell was to create a social platform for active users. Uh, and uh, we saw that this was uh, something that we as a bank, as Nordnet, at that point in time, because we had lost the trust of our users together with uh, the same way that all the banking society had lost it. Uh, and we wanted to regain that. We could just do that with a partner in crime. So that's why we found Sherwell that uh, was aiming to solve this problem just as we were, uh, but had more of the credibility and had a fantastic product out there that would actually help us doing that. And together, we built Sherwell into being a community of uh, 1,280, uh, 128,000 uh, users. Uh, and uh, it enables users to uh, um, improve their investments with 6.6 .6, uh, percentage points. So, uh, so it actually turned out the data shows that the users are getting better by following the advices of, uh, other, of other investments. So is fintech uh, a threat to banks? Uh, I would say yes, uh, it clearly is. It's something that is coming in and it's, uh, it's disturbing the industry, but it uh, is for the better. It is uh, speeding up the banks, so the banks need to adapt faster. We need to run faster to, if we want to, to stay around. Um, but it's also it's not so simple to say that fintech companies are just coming in and all the banks are going to, to disappear because at some point uh, the fintech companies need a banking license if they want to do the same things that, uh, that banks are doing and that will slow them down and they will have the regulations. So um, the best scenario is actually to find a playground that is working for both the banks and the fintech companies, where the fintech companies can continue doing what they are strong with, building fantastic consumer experience, where the banks can continue doing what they are fantastic with doing, is being strong, reliable financial systems that are, uh, are strong and can handle many transactions and many customers moving forward. 
So uh, yes, it's a threat, uh, but it's yes, also a big opportunity for everyone involved. And I think the most important thing in all of this is uh, at the end of the day, the winner is the customer. So all of us are going to win on this because uh, we are uh, going to have a much better cus customer experience moving forward. Uh, and, uh, but still yet having stable and, and great systems that the banks are providing. Cool. Great. Are we, are we taking questions? Oh, we're not taking questions. But we're having FICA, so we can ask questions afterwards. And we are recruiting as well. I'm just putting it down. Lots, lots.